Mobile gaming has really been taken off in the last 15 years. It's gone from being something that's very simple and niche and doesn't really take much to now the games are rivaling and sometimes exceeding the double A and triple A experiences. I mean, look at games like Genshin Impact, Tower of Fantasy, you know, uh, <laughs> Punishing Grey Raven. Like these games are absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, they get gotcha elements in them, but still they're ones that people are sinking some serious time into. And because people are sinking serious times into them, and also people are wanting to be able to use traditional controls, there are companies that are making controllers. We got Razer, we got Backbone, but you know, Game Vice has been putting out controllers for multiple platforms, from iOS to Android, for years. And they actually reached out to me about covering one of their latest devices for Android that not only gives you the ability to have a direct input without needing to use Bluetooth, but also giving you power delivery through so you can keep your phone charged as well as a headphone input and some of the best analog sticks that you're gonna find on a mobile gaming controller. But all that aside, the biggest aspect of this thing is the fact that you can utilize your cases with the controller. Because that's something I've been really annoyed with when it comes to other mobile gaming controllers is the need to remove your case. This comes to the whole system to be able to switch out to basically whatever your case you have for your Android device or even your iOS device and be able to still use your case and the controller. We're going to talk about all that and more in this review. So, uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and get into this review. All right, full disclosure, GameVice did send over this controller with the purpose of me doing a video review, but they are not influencing my opinions on this they're not paying me or anything and they don't get to see this before you guys do so when this comes out you're seeing it the same time they're going to be seeing it. so okay got it got it okay good let's go anyway so uh upon unboxing this you get the controller which if you look at the design of it it does look a lot like the original razor kishi i mean for all intents and purposes for those who might think oh this is a knockoff of the razor kishi well here's the thing Game Vice actually created that design in collaboration with Razer. So that's why it's basically, it, it looks the same because it's technically their design, right? So uh, it looks point for point almost exactly like it with some minor differences here and there. With the major difference being that it's a larger device overall and you've got the auxiliary input for your headphones and it just has a, a better system of being able to utilize your cases for your phones with it. Like that's something that a lot of these other mobile controllers, they don't get right. You've got to take, I know a lot of people say like, oh, it's not that big of a deal taking off your case and you know, putting it in this controller, but I don't want to have to do that. I want to be able to pull out my phone, pull out the controller, connect it, get my gaming in and be able to go from there. And this allows me to do that. But like the way that this overcomes the complexity of trying to figure out which adapter to put in place to be able to use which case and which phone and all that. If you flip over the charting, like the, the graph charting thing that you know you can use to basically if you want to go about it the hard way you flip it over there's a QR code you scan it and basically you put in the information because it'll take you to a website you'll select what phone you have like manufacturer which specific phone you have you know are you using the case or not and basically it'll give you all the dimensions and tell you which one because there's like a whole smorgasbord of options it'll, t it'll basically give you to tell you, hey, use this, use this, and you can put your phone in there and get going. So I like this system. Like this right here, unless like Razer with the, the Kishi V2 or Backbone with their Backbone for Android, like unless they've got a system like this, I, I really don't know how they're gonna compete because this right here, as far as I can tell right now, this is the ultimate mobile controller that I've been using aside from like getting a regular controller and it clipping on something and going from there. This right here does everything that I want to do because I don't want to take the case off of my Pixel. I want to just literally, like I said earlier, pop it in the controller and go. And this allows me to do that. So the other thing you'll want to do with this device is also go and download the app from the Play Store. And then with the app, you're able to do a lot of things. You can update the firmware on the controller as well as cycle through, get support. You know, you can check out the different things because this is pretty much a device that is meant 
for not only playing games for mobile, but also playing games through streaming services. So you've got Xbox Game Pass as a feature built into it, like it will basically route you to the Xbox Game Pass app and then, you know, sign in and be able to use and, and play your games via Game Pass. And it also has Stadia, which unfortunately, as you guys know, Stadia is going to be going down. It also has GeForce Now. And, you know, you can also utilize this if you do like pairing to, you know, like remote play to your PlayStation. You can use this controller for that as well, although it's not baked into it. I hope with the, um, I hope with the overall, like, uh, the way this app is designed, if they, when they go about removing Stadia, I hope that they put this in this place, like, you know, PlayStation Remote Play as an option. And it also showcases various mobile games that you can play with it. Like, I played Dead Trigger 2, I played Punching Gray Raven, you know, I played a bunch of other mobile games as well. It, was, it absolutely ran fine. Like, even Asphalt, uh, was it 9 or 8? I was playing that, and, you know, I like simulation games, but I don't mind arcade racers like this. It's absolutely cool. But there are some titles that are not going to work with this, and it's unfortunate because if you play them on an iPhone or iOS device with a controller, they work. That's Call of Duty Mobile, that's Apex Legends, and that's Genshin Impact and Tower of Fantasy. For whatever reason, on Android with a controller, they don't work. But in some instances, they do if you use like an Xbox or PlayStation controller via Bluetooth. Then some of them will work, which is weird. Like, why will it only work that way? But you have a direct connection and it's not going to register it. Really weird. And that's one of the things I've kind of run into a lot with a lot of different, you know, mobile games on Android versus how they are on iOS. It's just compatibility when it comes to controllers. So if you're going you're gonna to run into that issue as well. But... You know, for what it is, it's fine. Also, what's really cool is if you want to play like, you know, emulated games. So PlayStation, GameCube, you know, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, they all run fine. It recognizes the controller. You actually don't have to do any configuration for the controller because it recognizes that out the box, right? So that's absolutely cool. Now, going back over to something I did find weird is uh, one of the games that's advertised for this that you can utilize is none other than Fortnite, which is odd because when you click on trying to go into playing Fortnite to go download it, you'll go to the Play Store and get an error. As you guys know, there's like an issue between Play Store or Google and with uh, Epic Games, so you, you can't play it unless you're going to do like a cloud version of it. That's about the only way you can play it. Like you can't download it onto your Android device. So I don't know why that's there. That's kind of something I feel like they should have looked into. And even if you search it on the Play Store, it's not there. So kind of weird. I don't I don't really get it. And because I talked about Xbox Game Pass earlier and streaming services, let me circle back around to that. So I was playing some Xbox Game Pass on this. I tried everything from Forza Horizon 5 to playing Halo Infinite to playing Vampire Survivors and more. And this felt good and almost next to no latency. Maybe because I was playing this on the 5 gigahertz bandwidth and because I'm not that far from my router. I just didn't experience any latency and then, you know, it felt comfortable. I never had any type of, you know, some of these controllers you can feel cramped, you know, in your hands after playing for extended periods of time. But I was able to play several matches of Halo Infinite using this controller and I was feeling very comfortable throughout the whole experience. I had no issues with it. Like, you know, is there latency? Slight, but you know, what can you expect? We're not at that point of having you know, streaming services be like one to one, but for, for what's worth, it's why. I mean, even Destiny played really, really well with this controller, as well as the Final Fantasy titles. So, shout out to my buddy who was asking about that. Yes, Final Fantasy titles, they do work perfectly fine for that. But all that being said, uh, build quality on this is made out of plastic similar to the original Razer Kishi, although this feels of a higher grade plastic, so it's not, you know, fragile feeling and rather sturdy. So even the times where I have dropped it, which is due to my kids dropping it, it still holds up. I mean, it's not even scuffed up or anything like that, but then that could also be depending upon what surface you drop it on. If you drop it on concrete, I don't know about that one, player. It might, it might not last. Now, the last thing I want to bring up is a concern. It's, it's not a negative, it's more of a concern, and it's the elasticity on the device, which, you know, all the circuitry and wiring is going to be in that elasticity for both sides. 
And I think this is one of the reasons why Backbone is made the way it is, and the reason that Razer went with their, you know, their Kishi V2 style of being like the Backbone, because I think ultimately when you deal with these controllers that extend like this, after some time and enough tug and wear, they're gonna stop working. I've had three different Razer Kishi V1s stop working because after so much extended usage of stretching them, the circuitry went bad and like they, it just stopped being, it stopped working. So I do have a concern that this might happen with this game vice controller. I'm not saying that it will, but it is a possibility. So that's something to keep in mind. Running it out though, they really want you to use this with Xbox Game Pass. So you get a, a month of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate with it so you can utilize it. So cool. Yeah, that's, you know, it's kind of crazy because Microsoft is really pushing Xbox Game Pass Ultimate out everywhere. I mean, with Bitrix and PDP products and this and so much more. They want you to get on it. And, and that goes to tell you what direction that they're going. Not so much as just for streaming, but games as a service, as in a true service for being able to play their games no matter what your budget is. So that's cool. But anyways, that's the video, that's a review for this game by controller. What do you guys think? Is this something you've picked up or something you're considering? I honestly think it's the best Android controller you can get if you want to use a case. If you don't want to use a case, I think there are better options out there like the Kishi V2 and the upcoming Backbone controller just because they're that solid. But I mean, the sticks are where you're going to run into that issue because they're not as good as this. But I think uh, overall, the controller, this is absolutely phenomenal. Why don't you guys let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it, sub to the channel, and ding the notification bell. If you want to pick up one of these, I have a link for it down in the description below as well. All that being said, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay safe, be blessed. See you around. Peace.